want to thank you for the opportunity to present this book, which I will show you, this one, on the transcendental experience that has just been published by Virtual Ediciones in Spanish as well as in English, being a collective work of 11 authors. I would like to start providing a brief historical context, saying that there have been countless human attempts to move forward, to overcome pain and suffering, to help others, to expand time horizon, and to raise levels of consciousness. The human being has always been attracted by the state of inspired consciousness capable of achieving immediate intuitions of reality. This particular state that has mobilized many people is able to organize sets of experiences that usually are transmitted through philosophy, science, art, and mysticism. Each culture has its own ways of searching for what we could call the transcendent, mystical paths that leave the eye aside and move away from the psychological field into the unknown depths of the mind. It would be very long to describe here those practices that since very ancient times have been transmitted from one generation to another one as precious procedures that liberate from the sensation of finitude, connecting with timeless dimensions and moving experiences charged with meaning. From the confinement in dark caves, far from inhabited settlements, to long fastings, shamanic rituals, ingestion of hallucinogenic substances of the most varied kind, repetitive dances and forms of breathing induced to be able to concentrate on the heart, meditations of all kinds, energetic mobilizations and imposition of hands, alchemical procedures, devotional invocation and different forms of prayer mantras and yantras used to suspend the flow of mental acts, representation of geometrical forms that are increasingly abstract and a large etc. that leads us to the present time in which planetary civilization and technology make available new methods capable of favoring exceptional internal states. All this great diversity constitutes the background of our time in terms of mystical paths, which are expressed in very different ways, but which all aim to lead to the same inspired states. In this historical moment that we are living, in which for the first time the same human civilization covers the entire planet, efforts of synthesis are being produced that may make possible new qualitative leaps in our species. In that sense, we find Silo's contribution remarkable. He's an Argentine humanist and a spiritual guide who in addition to sufficient studies and systematization of the different procedures used by so many mystics, he set up a school from the last half of the 20th century to the first decade of the present one, developing four different disciplines as organized forms to access to the profound, the mental, energetic, material, and morphological disciplines. Nowadays, there are many people who have benefited from these works and who continue to practice his proposals. Among them, 
are those who have written this recently published book that gathers our experiences. We are women and men from different countries. We communicate in spite of the fact that our languages are different because we are united by a common purpose that drives us towards the highest internal state, towards the radiant and luminous worlds, returning transmuted from an experience that being unique and extraordinary is also equivalent in all those who humbly make silence and manage to give it space. Rescuing the research that John Lilly carried out in the late 60s and that Silo undertook in the following decade, we have developed tests and direct, direct experiences by submitting ourselves to repeated sensory deprivation practices in flotation tanks. We have used remote locations far away from the cities, looking uh, to work in retreats with small groups of people over the last 10 years. We have as participants a long story. For decades, we have practiced the system of self-liberation described in Louis Amman's book and normalize our different levels of consciousness. We have learned to maintain ourselves here and now so that we can continue to advance towards an assesses and improve a lifestyle coherent with those experiences. This allows us to access the state of inspired consciousness and thanks to our experience, we verify the transcendent. It is in this context of these practices that we look for new techniques that based on the use of flotation tanks and a methodology of teamwork could favor progress. Sensory suppression undoubtedly makes possible the destabilization of the eye helping to suppress the information of all the external senses and thus creating an excellent condition to advance in the mystical sense. The advantages of a deep relaxation and the concentration that floating provides are extraordinary and you all know it well. By almost totally reducing the external sensory activity, the mind can concentrate in the direction of the depth that interests us. It is not something rational. It is rather a matter of abandoning oneself in order to pass underneath rationality. The direction is towards the void. It is precisely about doing nothing, waiting. In many cases, it takes up to 40 minutes to enter. So it is necessary not to despair and to take advantage of that time to relax. In these initial moments, one can also explore keeping the attention on the breath and other resources that accelerate what the chamber tends to produce on its own. Throughout the sessions, there is an accumulation of impulses and suddenly allows us to capture and to structure sensations. Although each one of us is so different, in the internal world, there are similarities that overcome even the most dissimilar conditions. We have observed this among the participants of the different groups, and we can affirm that the experience is organized based on the following steps. To begin with, the feeling of floating at the same skin temperature 
and not having any sensory stimulation is very relaxing. If one also intentionally goes deeper into relaxation by mentally going through all the external parts of the body and then attending to the internal sensations to relax them and concluding with a mental relaxation, one reaches an optimum condition. If one does not manage to go further, the deep relaxation and calm experience has the characteristics of a very complete experience of peace. But if one continues to float, one experiences the emptiness that goes from the near trance-like stillness to the experience of floating in an absolute emptiness. The nothingness gains ground. It gets, it gets wider, deeper, more and more intense. The mental acts themselves are installed in this sort of infinite darkness, abandoning themselves in it, resting there, emptying the representations. There are no images, no comparison, no memory, a kind of stupor, forgetfulness, dissolution or non-existence invades. The nothing, which is not the nothing, is the only thing present. The void is like an absolute silence, like the zero point that John Lilly describes so well. It is worth going through this, staying there and recording it well, because it is this void that allows us to then reach the energy with its greatest power. Partly the void is also produced from the disappearance of the body's sensation. In that infinite void, little by little, the energy begins to manifest, a luminous force that circulates and gains intensity. The presence of the force increases and becomes a very intense energetic and luminous phenomenon. It can concentrate or diffuse itself. In any case, the mind and the body are strongly vigorized. If the experience is concluded here, one feels a deep sense of well being. But if one holds the energetic power and concentrate it on the cusp in the inner center of the head, one moves into another space full of meaning. It is like finding the source from which this energy comes, which is sometimes so powerful that it produces resistance. One can be sucked into a luminous center or feel that one has passed into a center where everything exists. There, a profound experience of recognition, pure noetic experiences are produced. It is experienced as the highest manifestation of the original light. It reveals itself as the center towards which all mystical searches converge, the most sacred, the city of meanings, of the eternal, as that which gives shelter. There, comprehensions are produced. One ascends from comprehension to comprehension, but fundamentally one experiences it as the origin and the end of everything, in a state of pure recognition. One enters into another state that is only meanings. After the session, strong feelings of gratitude, kindness, love, and compassion usually emerge, as well as growing mystical feeling 
that tends to express itself in everyday life and to be transmitted to others. Then we return to the world. We return because this spirit that is being built is not only something for beyond, it is also something for here and now. This is the pretension of mysticism. Religions tend more to promise paradises and consolation from a hope of future salvation. Religions are based, based on faith. Instead, mysticism seeks the transcendental experience in this life and therefore adapts the personal lifestyle to the consequences of that experience. With so many flotation sessions and in the effort of the consciousness to assimilate the new experiences, many times existential questions arise that apparently were resolved. Who am I really? What to do with all this? It arises the need to give new meaning to one's existence and to share it with others. Sometimes the need to collaborate in the transformation of epochal paradigms arise. One notices the need to align personal destiny and social transformation in the same direction, understanding that the world is not separate. On the contrary, it is part of the same structure as the spiritual plane. This beyond presents itself again and again as questions, reminiscences, evanescent memories, or even in dreams. With what we have experienced floating, it has become evident for us the energetic orientation towards the luminous center. And this verification has given, given a new meaning to our existence. It has put us in front of the evidence that life does not end with death. This places us in the situation to help others, many others, and to collaborate so that humanity continues to advance in an evolutionary sense and in a transcendental direction. That is why we wrote this book in order to spread these realities and that is also why we make ourselves available for scientific research that seeks to corroborate this kind of experiences. For us it is of great value what you do, opening flotation centers and making this technology so favorable to consciousness awakening accessible to so many people. If there is anything more that we could do in order, in order to contribute, if you are interested in a particular research, or if you would like to propose us how we can contribute more, here we are at your disposition. Thank you. Thank you very much.